not gonna lie, I think, like, my favorite part of the morning is just kind of, like, chilling out and rigging up the boat, dude. Especially during the summer, it's, like, 172 degrees. Like, not that hot, but the humidity feels like that. Just, like, that peaceful, just as the sun is rising. Probably I should be out there fishing, but it's really chill, like, to sit here and play around with the boat. Get everything rigged up. Kind of just enjoy the quiet before the heat and all that. But we do need to get going, even though I am enjoying this. Uh, we're going to get this thing wrapped up and uh, see if we can't figure a few things out today. Because that's what it's about. Learning on a daily basis. So to all you guys that were tagging me about having old crappy gloves, I finally bought new gloves. <laughs> so they were getting kind of bad. Like the fingers were split. Like it was... It was pretty freaking bad, so I finally bought gloves. But, dude, if you guys don't wear gloves, I know you're not in Florida. Here, let me tell you this real quick. I know you might not be in Florida in that, but, dude, the gloves do two freaking awesome things, and I get a lot of questions about them in the videos. One, it is sun protection, because you can never put, like, sunscreen on your hand and keep it on your hand, and it makes you all gooey and greasy to touch your, like, your cork or your EVO, EVS um, handles, like that foam in that. It eats it away if you get sunblock on. It's just a freaking mess, and the easiest way to, like, manage that is to go ahead and just um, put gloves on, dude. And I like these Glacier gloves from a price point versus, like, lasting and having a little longer, like, like wrist thing on them these are the ones and you want to get the ones that have the pads on them because they're more grippy but then the other thing that's really nice with these is i don't know about you but i do a lot of stupid bleep yeah i mean i think we all do we just don't like to talk about it but in any case i do a lot of stupid stuff like i'll stick hooks in my fingers maybe not all the way through but like i'll hook my fingers you know i'll scrape my freaking hand on some stupid corn like i just I end up bleeding one to three times per day, like when I'm fishing, it's just the reality. And these gloves, dude, they're not like super protective, heavy duty Carhartt gloves or anything, but they have kept me from getting like hooked and getting like cut up quite a few times, even like getting like spined by a fish and stuff like that. So they do provide like a little bit of protection for you. Um, so for people like me, if you do stupid bleep, you can put on gloves, dude, and they'll protect your hands. But sun protection and freaking a little bit of hand protection, dude, like, you don't you don't want to get your fingers cut off from skin cancer. And it's really hard to put freaking sunblock on these. Really hard. So try them. They're at Tech Warehouse if you want to try them. I like them. So. That's it. PSA, gloves, sun, protect yourself. Protect yourself! Make sure you like, subscribe, freaking hit that notification button, guys. We, we broke 30K a while ago. We're pushing the numbers up, and it's all thanks to you guys. And I want to do more. I want to make it happen. Spread the word. Mikey Balls Fishing, real fishing. Enough of that, though. Let's go fishing. Oh, dear. That was an awesome hook set by Mike right there. I think that might be a big one because I make awesome hook sets, right? No way! No freaking way! Bro, I have never ever caught a freaking catfish out here! <laughs> oh no way! Are you kidding me? Fuck, that's a catfish! That's a kitty catfish! Oh, we gotta get this thing out of the way. I've never in my life caught a catfish out. What in the Sam Hell? Get up here, cat. That's a big one, too, dude. Look at that. Oh, come on now. Take a breath. Look at <laughs> Look out. They have spines, Bob. Bob, get. Look at that thing. Look at the head on that thing. I can't believe I caught a catfish. I've never in my life caught a catfish out here. Granted, I've only fished out here like four or so years. But dude, I've never caught, I don't even know what kind of catfish that is. I'm not a catfish guy. You're making some squawking sound. Oh God, he ain't coming on. Oh, good. You see how they, so my buddy taught me, you see the, the goop on the line right there? That's like slime, and when you're catching fish offshore, or when you see fish out on the graph and you can't catch them, that uh, it usually means you're seeing catfish. Look at that. I got a catfish. I got a, you gotta watch out for it. They got these spines right here. You gotta watch out for them jokers. That's why I never grab them because I'm scared. Bog, that's your first catfish. Let's let them go. Should probably go home and eat them, but goodbye, catfish. <laughs> that was freaking nuts.
nuts. I have all the damn things to catch. Freaking catfish. I thought it was like a freaking six pound bass. Oh. It's gonna be another multi-species day, bro. Multi-species. I have never, ever, ever, like I can't accentuate ever enough. Caught a catfish out here. Like dude, freaking ever caught, like ever. I'd never seen one, never like hooked one on the bottom, never, never. Oh, a catfish on a freaking Nico rig, dude. I mean, not a giant, but probably like four and a half, five pounds. Like, and I've never freaking seen one, which is really interesting because if there's bigger catfish like that or medium sized catfish, there's baby catfish. And I do know bass down here eat the catfish. So we, we start the day off with a total first, dude, the total, total first. Like, I'm still like never, ever. Like, I've never, like, you might catch a few like brim, a few bluegill. You know, maybe a speck, like if you're throwing a, spe a crappie, we call them speck down here. If you're throwing like crankbait or something like that, or you'll catch freaking bass. Like, like, dude, I've, I've never even caught a gar out here. I've seen them and I know they're out here, but, but like, a catfish? What the hell's going on? In any case, I wanted to use that as a good opportunity to teach you something. And once again, I got to credit my buddy JT Kenny with this because he taught me this. So when you're dragging on the bottom... And say, say you see fish, you see a school of fish, dot, 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 and you're on the graph, and you're scanning around, and you're like, woo, good to catch them, yeah. Okay, so you start dragging, and you bring up your line, and it looks like this. You see the slime goop? Slime goop. Slime goop. Now, here's the deal. This is where you got to be a fisherman, and you got to be analytical. It doesn't mean there aren't bass down there. Let's start with that. But it does mean... There are catfish down there, because those catfish have that slime on their, their skin and all that, the, that wonderful goo. <laughs> but yeah, in any case, that you might be seeing some of the dots that are on your graph, some of the stuff you're picking up are catfish, um, especially if they look freaking gigantic. That's, that's one way they'll fake you out. But they can be catfish, so if you're dragging, or even if you're not like scanning for fish and you're dragging a spot and you start getting that slime on your line, it means there's catfish around, or you might be dragging over a catfish or something along those lines. So if you're fishing for catfish, woo, 10 points. For fishing for bass, eh, forage in the area. There might be bass. Frog. Roar, roar. Oh, that, this is turning into like a, like a dog porn video or something. That's horrible. He ate it on the pop up. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Oh, that's a good one, guys. He ate it when I popped it off the bottom. These fish are kind of suspended. Oh god, that's a big one. Oh god. <laughs> oh, come here, come here, come here. Pretty, please come here. Oh, she really ate it. Oh no, no. She she ate it so good she broke off. I'm sorry, Bog. Now Bog's angry with me. He's like, bro, that was a good one. I'm sorry, we'll get another one. It's okay. Fish this time. Oh, here she comes. Oh, yeah. This guy's pissed. Bro, don't be pissed. I guess I'd be pissed without a hook in my mouth, too. Oh! <laughs> Bob, we got you a fish. It's been so long. One of them bass fishes. It's a bass fish, Bog. Bog loves him some bass fish. It's nice to catch the right kind of species. <laughs> nice job. Always keep it professional. <laughs> Oh! Oh my god! Nice! <laughs> Guys, hey, you know what? We're kind of figuring out a new technique right here. Look at this three pounder. Oh, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here, don't do it! Just open your mouth! Ow, ow, ow. Alright, if you're gonna act like that, then we're just gonna grab you. Bog loves you. Guys, so, you know I love the Ned. I'm a Ned guy. So, nice three pounder, put her back. We've been figuring out this technique though. Let me keep us on the spot. And um, basically, you know, I've been catching a bunch of fish on the spoon. 
and these fish are a little bit off the bottom. I'm having trouble catching them with the spoon. They're getting beat up. You guys are kind of coming out. That's what happens when you put up videos, but Guggen life, whatever. But what we're doing with this, we got our 3 8 ounce Berkeley head. You know, I'm not a huge Berkeley fan, but for some reason this thing works better than the majority of them. I don't care what anybody else thinks. I know it does because I've tried the other ones. And what we're doing is we're just flicking this thing off the bottom and you get this kind of like darting action and it gets a few feet off the bottom and you know what? It's just for fish just like these right here. They're like a foot or two off the bottom, maybe a hair more. And they're, they're chomping it, dude. And you don't lose them with the freaking single hook and it seems to work. We got to get back in there. Let's make this work, right? Oh dear. We got them lined up, guys. Oh, oh no. <laughs> oh no. Jeez. Talk like a freaking Muppet, right? Just using that, that flicking motion, you can see just, and I'm almost doing it on slack line not really like super taut with the line and just that's why i'm kind of calling it stroking you're sort of stroking that that ned just pop 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 sit 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 and you definitely want to give it a pause in between we're not like crazy schooling hyperactive fish we're just kind of and then everyone's well i'll feel oh feet on there there we go wow she ate it. that might be a better one Dude, they just suck it up. It's almost like a hair jig bite. I know these aren't giants, but like, they, it's I can't catch them any other way. <laughs> it's kind of, kind of annoying actually, because I wouldn't mind catching them another way. All right, I need that bait back because I'm running out. But they, they just suck it right up. That's a real little guy. And um, and then they're running at me. So I mean, they're obviously potted up. They're just not behaving like schooly fish should. And then as usual, you know, make sure you're keeping your lines. Like you're really needing to line up fish. When you get on a little pod, even if they're biting funky, you want to be detail oriented. That's why I've caught a lot of giant fish behind people, in front of people, on the same spots as people. And like when, when they're just freaking going, like you got to be detail oriented. And that way you're going to catch more and bigger fish, dude. Like we'll do Al Lindler. 10% of the fish are in or no what is it 90 percent of fish are in 10 percent of the water eh so alan is right dude freaking when they're in a spot they're lined up make sure you're fishing them correctly because you're going to get more bites it can be the div ah! like this me screwing stuff up talking to you guys it can be the difference between catching a freaking eight and a four or a three or a two or catching one fish and like 10 fish it really makes a difference. And when I'm talking about lines, I'm talking about, see how I have my blue line? I'm lined up right on this, this pod right here. This line, this school, this bar, this ledge. I'm trying to keep the boat straight, even though I got a breeze. And put the bait in front of them every, every single time. Oh, he come off. Oh. A fish on guys popping it again. It might be a better one. Oh dear. Oh dear. I don't know if it's oh, it's just a solid one. <laughs> this is working. Working. I love when stuff works. Looks like you've been caught a couple times, honey goo. So let's do a technique breakdown. First, I'd like you to welcome back Bog. What you call me, baby, Bog? Bog is making a short appearance here with us because it is summer and freaking dogs get super duper hot, which he already is. And we're only fishing for a couple hours this morning. So Bog, come here, come here, come here, dude. Say, say hello. Oh, thank you. So Bog's making a quick appearance. He's gonna, oh, thank you. Thank you, Bog. But um, he's actually, cha we've semi changed his name to Bogenstein. Kind of German, you know, like, I don't know, makes them cooler. I wanted to show you, so Bog does yoga. Oh, oh, check this out. Bog, that's, 
I don't do yoga, but my girl does it. And she says that's what's called downward dog. So my dog does yoga. What does your dog do? Bog does yoga? Bog does yoga. Yoga. Yoga bog. Oh, are you yoga? Yoga bog. He's like triple double jointed. Back to techniques, because I know that's what you want to hear. You don't want to sit here and look at bog do double jointed bog yoga. So I figured out this new little technique and I don't know how crazy it is but it's had some functionality. You know I've been catching some like semi-suspended fish on that big spoon. Man it slowed down and the Googans are out dude. They beat up the spot and those fish they, they get the message. They're like yo bro like I'm sick of getting hooked in the mouth. I'm out of here. Okay, fair enough. Well, I wanted to kind of mimic that, but in a more subtle finesse way. So you know how much I love the Ned Rig, dude. So I've been playing with this, and it actually happened on accident, and some of the best things in fishing do. Dude, I was throwing this thing out here, dragging it on a shell bar, as I drop it. And as I'm dragging it on the shell bar, I just kind of went and popped it up, kind of, you know, I guess you'd call it like stroked it, danced it. And basically what that bait will do is it'll go and it darts because it's all straight and the, the head is kind of, I don't know, streamlined. It's almost like a darter head, but rounder. So that bait just kind of jerks up and down. Dude, and I got bit, I caught like a four pounder. This was a couple days ago. Actually, it started happening too with my buddy. Check him out, every cast counts with a Z at the end. Super cool young dude, had a lot of challenges in, the, in wow, I can talk, a lot of challenges in his life. But um, dude, freaking great attitude. Like check him out but yeah we were out here and we freaking went doo, 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 and, and all of a sudden I got some bites and he got some bites and we started kind of mimicking that presentation and I have noticed these fish on the graph are still two three foot above the bottom they're semi suspended and so we got this thing out and we put a few different presentations on the back right here you're gonna see this is the Demiki. it's the hot dog bait I don't even know if they're gonna make this anymore so please don't buy them all at tackle warehouse because I'm going to the other two trailers are my, my standard go-to trailers. A seven inch fat ace cut down. This one's kind of ripped off, but just above the worm sack. Same thing with a standard fat ace, your six inch fat ace. Cut off just above the worm sack. Colors, keep it simple. Green pumpkin, copper field. I like natural stuff because it looks like the brim that are down there. But the whole key to this technique was was how you presented it. And you know, dude, we all throw 30,579 baits. And the thing is, you can throw those 30,705, wow like 30 40 different ways like you can throw them dude like a, like a jig for example a football jig you can drag it you can stroke it you can swim it you can roll it on the bottom like you can do so many things with baits and sometimes I think we, we forget like we have a way that we've been successful throwing them and we forget like dude this bait is super versatile yeah it might be a crankbait that just dive down dives down and gr like grinds the bottom but you know what you can do you can make it super grind the bottom. You can redirect it by changing your rod tip. You can freaking let it float up off the bottom and like do like a 10 count on it. There's so many different ways to present these baits that we think there's just like one way to do it. Like it's all linear. Like, it, I don't know, like it's like it's a flat world, like flat earth, bro. You're gonna fall off the end of the earth if you sail to the end. And that's what happened here. And sometimes it happens on accidents. You get like a bite doing something weird with a bait that you normally fish a certain way. But then all of a sudden you like, oops. I popped it, kind of like this Ned Rig. I flicked it up, I stroked it just a little bit, and boom, dude, they started eating it, and I started mimicking that, that presentation. And you know, I'm a little slow, I'm a little stupid. That's why I shoot the videos, because I notice stuff in the videos after, and then I gotta come back and kind of learn it and figure it out. But you pick up things when you're, when you're out there fishing that you really just don't notice if you're just kind of going through the motions and fishing. So paying attention to those details and, and picking up on, hey, when did that fish bite the bait? When did it actually happen? When did this go down? Can be huge for changing a day. Now granted, we didn't catch freaking giants, dude. I'll say that right off the bat. But we got bit, and I've been struggling to get bit, dude, after I lost track of that spoon bite. So these fish are suspended, they're a little harder to catch. I can't catch them on a hair jig. I can't catch them on like that hog tie hog farmer. I can't catch them on traditional suspended stuff, but I know they're there. I can see them. So playing around with stuff that I have super duper confidence in like that Ned rig but making it hit a different section of the water column making it pop up giving it a different kind of action stroking it dancing it it pays off dude so always remember I, I like to take lessons from each day I'm out fishing like not to get too deep and stupid but you know you got to pick something up if you're out here and you're not learning anything you're not freaking doing anything dude I don't even care if you're not catching fish if you're not learning you're not fishing because that's all fishing is is learning day in and day out but just 
pick something up, draw a story, draw a narrative, draw a lesson from the day. And dude, playing with that net and flicking it up like that, that's my lesson for the day, dude. I might not have caught giants, but you know what? I might come back here and in a month, in two months, in a year from now, or on some other lake, I might see those fish in that same situation on the graph where they're just kind of elevated a hair above the bottom. And I might go to town on them, boy. So as usual guys, thanks for watching. I hope that tip helps you out. Let me know if you catch them on that net rig like that, where you're flicking it up, stroking it, dancing it, whatever you want to call it. I think it's something that has a lot of potential. I'm sure you guys are already doing it, some of you. Let me know, give me some feedback because I'm kind of curious if it's something that's a little more universal because I think it, it really fills a gap for when you're fishing plastics and they're biting plastics and it's a plastic style bite, but you need to get that bait up in the water calm. As usual, I'm not gonna tell you to like it. But like, say, say what's up to Bog. What's up, Bog? Let's see it down in the comments. Right, Bog? Yes, sir, what's up? Because you put in some time, bro. Like, oh, good boy. Dude, he got hot out here hanging out. But as usual, guys, make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like. Make sure you turn on that bell. Hit the bell. Ring, ring, ring that bell. So you get notifications when new vids go up. And techniques like this might help you out. They might not. But at some point, hopefully we'll figure out something to help you out because that's kind of the goal to enjoy share our experience and for all of us to learn and kind of grow our fishing experience and catch more fish more and bigger i prefer bigger not not more is cool but bigger bigger is better but as usual guys thanks for watching and thank you again for all the subs that you've thrown down dude for kid we are growing this channel even though it's been around since like 2009 we we're growing this channel faster and bigger than anybody dude it's freaking flying and I gotta thank you for that. It's freaking cool. It makes me feel great about what we're doing out here on the water. It gives a positive spin to every time we're out on the water. And uh, thank you, that's about it. So till next time, till we find some other cool weird thing to try out, we're gonna wrap it up, take bog in, cool them off, and enjoy some AC. Tight lines, boys.